Some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite MLB team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite MLB team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to History Is Us. I'm Dr. Eddie S. Glaude Jr. Join me as we journey through history to face the ugly truths at the heart of the American story. Throughout this series, we explore who we are as a nation. Listen to History Is Us, a creation and presentation of Shining City Audio, a C-13 Originals, and John Meachin Studio. Available now on the Odyssey app or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It is Dukes and Bell. We are live at State Farm Arena tonight. It's Hawks Charlotte, guys. Play-in tournament. It is the playoffs, though. Don't fool yourself. It will have all the intensity of uh, the games you saw last night. And to talk about it, with us is uh, our NBA insider, Ryan McDonough, Odyssey.com. He is on the line, guys. Insider calls brought to you by driveway.com. Looking for a car? Go to driveway.com where you can get pre-qualified, buy a car, and get it delivered. Ryan, I want to start with last night's games before we get into our Hawks because we do have a lot of questions in regards to what we expect tonight. But uh, the, the game Mike and I were saying that we really enjoyed was the Minnesota Clippers game. I mean, that thing, it's a four- or five-point win for mm. Minnesota. They were down early. They had multiple guys in foul trouble. And then you had Patrick Beverly being, well, Patrick Beverly. What did you think about that matchup last night, and what did it say about Minnesota? Good afternoon, guys. Always great to be on with you. And I was very impressed with the Timberwolves last night. I think it would be difficult not to be. They had every reason and an excuse not to win the game, especially with Carl Anthony Towns, their best player, and all-star having one of the worst games of his career. I mean, three for 11 from the floor, four turnovers. He fouled out in just 24 minutes. Uh, and in Minnesota, you know, against a good Clippers team, keep in mind the Clippers, I think they'd won four or five in a row coming into the playoffs uh, with Paul George healthy, and they brought back Norman Powell and Robert Covington. So full disclosure, I picked the Clippers to win the game last night. I felt good about that pick through the first three-plus quarters. And then with about 10 minutes left and the Clippers up 10, Minnesota really flipped the script. And I was really impressed with their guards. I think the shot-making of D'Angelo Russell and the all-around scoring ability and power of Anthony Edwards stood out to me. Uh, I think Edwards is going to be a breakout star, and now I'm really excited to watch him and the Timberwolves play the Grizzlies in the next round. We were talking earlier in the show about Anthony Edwards only had one season at Georgia, and obviously you, you, you wish, especially you as a former general manager, these guys had a little more seasoning. Is this just what you see now after two and three years, these guys just come into their own, and now he's finally arrived, he's a star? I think that's what's happened. He's, he's very young, but uh, you know they showed some of the all-time scoring leaders last night in terms of most points before 21st birthday. And Anthony Edwards is up there with LeBron James and Kevin Durant and Kobe Bryant and some of the all-time great players, as is Luka Doncic. So, yeah, that's one of the challenges. You know, in, in today's NBA, um, when I was GM of the Phoenix Suns, we brought in Devin Booker and uh, the Devin Booker that everybody sees now, an all-star and potential first-team All-NBA guy, was certainly not uh, the same player in 2015 when he drafted him at 18 years years old out of Kentucky so it does take take some time you have to be patient as a head coach or executive you don't always get to see it through but uh, I think on a national stage last night Anthony Edwards at 21 really stepped up and really impressed me not only with the 30 points and five rebounds guys but especially with how aggressive he was with the, with the game on the line down the stretch he wanted the ball he did not want a screen to bring the second defender into the play he wanted to isolate and he was very efficient not only making shots but getting to the basket in the free throw line as well and he will dunk on you I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's the other thing yeah. I love about the kid is he will go to the basket hard. It's Ryan McDonough. Guys, let's shift gears and talk about tonight. We are live at State Farm. And, Ryan, um, this is a game the Hawks are expected to win. Um, the bookmakers have us at a five, five-and-a-half point favorite. We're at home. All things play into our favor. But this Charlotte team is difficult, and I think this is going to be a tougher matchup mm -hmm. than just rolling out the ball and expecting the Hawks to roll this team. Oh, I think so. I think these teams are relatively evenly matched. I, I do think the Hawks will win the game, but uh, I think it's going to be a close game. And just about every metric I look at, guys, including the overall record, I mean, these teams had the same uh, regular season record, 43 and 39. They played uh, during the year, and I thought those games were well played and relatively evenly matched. 
Um, Gordon Hayward is out tonight for uh, Charlotte, which is obviously a big injury, but on the Hawks' side, no John Collins and Lou Williams. So uh, I think this will be a possession-by-possession game. I expect it to be a a shootout. I mean, these teams uh, are two of the top eight in the league offensively. They're both much better on the offensive end than the defensive end. Uh, So that's how they played all year. I think that's how they continue to play. And for me, really, it comes down to who wins the battle in the backcourt. Uh, Those two young star point guards, Trey Young for the Hawks and and LaMelo Ball, the rising star for Charlotte. I think whoever wins that matchup, their team will win the game tonight. It's Ryan McDonough, guys, our Odyssey NBA insider, former general manager with us here on the WaitFor.com hotline. We've been trying to – I don't know, psychoanalyze, handicap this Hawks team all season, Ryan. We, I think we last had you on around the All-Star break. What do you make of this team? I mean, the Eastern Conference has gotten better. We've had some injuries, but so has everyone else in, in, in the league. So what do you make of what the Hawks are? I like the way the Hawks have finished the year. Obviously, a very underwhelming start to the year in the middle of the year, but uh, they played it better down the stretch. There, there was questions at some point, uh, you know, about whether they would even make the play-in, uh, and what, you know, that would certainly be disappointing coming off a phenomenal year a year ago in the run to the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, so I, I like the way they finished the season, keeping in mind that uh, one of their best players, John Collins, is is out and hasn't played a whole lot uh, down the stretch. So uh, you know, I, I think if they do get into the play, and, and that's the, I, I guess the juicy part of the, the exciting part. If you're a Hawks fan, if they do get into the playoffs, I think they have a chance because they, they'd be matched up uh, with the number one seed of Miami Heat as the eighth seed. Uh, I, I don't think that series is a mismatch at all. Um, and, and so, you know, full disclosure, I, I'm picking the Hawks to win tonight. And if they win tonight, which I anticipate, I'm also picking them to win in Cleveland uh, the next game on Friday. So I, I think they will win these two games and be the eighth seed. And um, as you guys know, in, in the playoffs, a lot of it is about talent and matchups more than seeding. Uh, so even though on paper that would be the one eight series, with Miami in the one slot and Atlanta in the eighth spot in that scenario, I do not think that's a mismatch. And if that is the first-round matchup, I think that would be a long, hard-fought series. Ryan, is Trey Young an underrated superstar in this league? Well, certainly in terms of what he does, guys. I mean, going back to Tiny Archibald, when you look at you know guys who have led the league in the same year in terms of total points and total assists, um, there's a reason that uh, you know not many guys in the history of the NBA have done that. Uh, so I, I think it speaks to the consistency and durability of Trey Young. Uh, you know, he performs night in and night out. Uh, if you go and look at the uh, you know year over year game, the game, excuse me. Uh, leaders for the Hawks, it's, you know, points and assists, it's, it's young in just about every single category, every single night, and that's really difficult to do, especially, I think, for a young player and somebody with Trey's frame. Uh, he's obviously relatively slight compared to most NBA superstars, um, so I, I think nationally he's starting to get the attention he deserves. I, I think the run to the Eastern Conference Finals a year ago really helped with that, but certainly a breakout performance tonight on the biggest stage would help solidify him as one of the rising young superstars in the game, which those of us who watch him closely know he is and then again if, if they get into the playoffs anything can happen i like the talent on this hawks team guys and you know regular season is what it is but you play the 82 games to get to this point and now that they're at this point i think the hawks have a real opportunity not only in the play-in but again if they get to round one against miami i think they have a real shot all right so ryan mcdonough basically saying anybody who wants to see travis schlank blow up the process that would be a mistake then just see it through and maybe add something to the offseason yeah, I, I don't think that that's the next move for Atlanta. I, I think the next move for the Atlanta Hawks is maybe consolidation. Uh, and what I mean by that from an executive perspective is they have good depth. Um, you know, sometimes the depth, especially if it's comparable depth, can make it difficult for a coach like Nate McMillan to figure out who should play, you know, who should start, who should come off the bench. Uh, they have a lot of talent and depth. Uh, so I, I think that may be the next roster move. But um, I like this team, you know, obviously the run to the conference finals, Last year, uh, I like the way the roster's made up. Um, guys, let me put it this way. When I look at some teams, even some playoff teams, uh, toward you know maybe the, the bottom of their, their starting rotation, but especially their bench, uh, I see some significant holes. I don't necessarily see that with Atlanta, especially when they're fully healthy with, with Collins and Williams and those guys in the lineup. So uh, I think the next move, again, maybe some consolidation, maybe using some of those young players and draft picks to get one uh, other star to go alongside Trey Young. Uh, but I, no, I, I do not think that's it's bring that uh, you know blow this thing up i think the roster is too talented for that and frankly given what they did last year uh, we'll see what happens this year's play in and maybe playoff run but given what they did a year ago i think they're too talented uh, to hit the reset button and, and try to do something drastic other than adding another superstar odyssey nba insider ryan mcdonough joining us here on dukes and bell we are live at state farm getting ready for tonight's matchup hawks hornets tip is at seven pregame six thirty. um put your gm hat back on for me I've been very critical of DeAndre Hunter saying I want more production from him. 
we are now four years into his career. He was the fourth overall pick for our team. As a general manager, take away some of the injury games and, and whatnot. When do you know that a player is what you expected him to be and you figure out that he's going to give you what you expected him to give you when you drafted him? That's a great question, especially relative to Hunter, who, you know, 24 years old should be just approaching the prime of his career. I, I think the biggest question mark with him is relatively obvious is the durability. You know, when I look at games played over the course of his career, uh, he's missed significant time just about every year in the league. Um, so so I, I think, you know, the Atlanta has some significant questions to answer starting this offseason relative to Hunter. Certainly a, a good play in and potentially playoff performance would help his cause. But uh, at the end of year three, he is extension eligible. Um, and, and usually that's an inflection point, guys, for a player and his agent and the franchise in terms of how much or how little does the franchise value me. I keep in mind coming off a third year of a rookie scale contract is the first time a player is extension eligible. So will the Hawks, uh, you know, give him a decent size offer? Um, uh, you know, I, that remains to be seen. I do like the player. Uh, I think he's impactful, especially defensively when he plays for Atlanta, but he has missed a significant amount of time. So if the Hawks, led by Travis Schlenk and Tony Ressler and their group, throw a big money offer at him, uh, maybe there's some contingencies as far as minutes played, games played, some bonuses and things like that built into it. But uh, I, I think this offseason is the point of truth, not only for, for Hunter, but for the front office to answer how much do we value this guy. And if they don't value him at a significant level, if they don't think he can be a good starter on a championship contending team, then maybe a hunter move uh, is you know coming this offseason but again i'm a fan of the player i, I just wish he'd stay healthier because i does th i do think he helps the hawks especially in between uh, collins and young when he's healthy on the defensive end of the floor it is ryan mcdonough our odyssey nba insider because they don't we talk about the process uh, cam reddish is also gone he didn't like it he didn't feel he was getting the, uh, i guess the minutes in the rotation it wouldn't it didn't get acrimonious but they obliged him they sent him to the knicks so we have a first round pick i mean should we package something and just try to i know you said stay with the stay the course but a better backup behind trey because lou williams obviously this will probably be done he'll be after gone after this season yeah, I, I think that, that's been a question, you know, really um, throughout the course of, of Trey's young career is when he's off the court, um, you know, can, can they stabilize? He, obviously, he carries such a heavy load, as we discussed, with, with the points and assists and setting records and all that. Uh, but when he's off the floor, um, you know, can, can you at least stay relatively neutral and, and not be a net negative, um, you know, when he's on the bench or in foul trouble or injured, not in the lineup? Uh, they, you know, they tried it with Evan Turner a couple of years ago. That did not work out very well. So, um, you know, they, they've been searching for that, and, and I get that. Uh, I'll give you an example of a franchise who's done it well, the Memphis Grizzlies with Tyus Jones backing up John Morant. Uh, Jones has emerged as a really good backup, so – Certainly, I think that will be a position of need for the Hawks and a focus uh, for Travis Slank in his front office this offseason. Now, from an executive standpoint, that can be a difficult sell because uh, Trey Young's going to play 40-plus minutes a night in the playoffs. He's going to have the ball in his hands. So can you get a high-level guy to sign up, especially as a free agent, in a limited role where he knows he's going to be on the bench regardless of how he plays down the stretch? Uh, that is a challenge. But, again, the Hawks have a number of young players. They have a draft pick to play with, as you mentioned. They have financial flexibility with their contracts. So I think they're do for a consolidation move and a more aggressive move, which uh, I think it, you'll likely see this offseason, uh, especially if they don't advance as far as they would like in the playoffs. What do the Lakers do? Last thing mm -hmm. for us. I don't think it's as a desirable job as it was. You have aging stars. What do the Lakers do, Ryan? Lakers are in trouble. <laughs> and I'm not saying that to be <laughs> flippant or critical, but they're in a lot of trouble. I mean, keep in mind, they still owe draft picks and pick swaps uh, because of the Anthony Davis deal with the New Orleans Pelicans. Now, obviously, they won a championship in 2020 based off of that deal, but uh, it's time to pay the piper, so to speak, mm -hmm. with the contracts. Nobody in the league is going to take Russell Westbrook's contract at $47 million, in my opinion, unless the Lakers incentivize that. Uh, and then, so they don't have great contract structure. They don't have much, if any, young talent, and they don't have draft picks to play with. Uh, you're, you're kind of boxed in, guys. So, uh, you know, I'm guessing they'll try to trade Westbrook for maybe a couple less bad contracts. It does not mean the contracts are going to be good. They get back in return, just maybe slightly less bad and split them up. But uh, the Lakers are in trouble. I do not see a quick fix. And I don't see a way, honestly, guys, for them to climb ahead of some of the and coming teams are the best teams in the West, like Phoenix, Memphis, even Dallas. Uh, I think the Lakers coming in the next year, best case scenario, is they're in that five to eight range in the West. 
Great job, Ryan. We always love talking with you. Ryan McDonough, Insider Calls, brought to you by Driveway.com. Head to Driveway.com today to shop more than 25,000 new and used cars in Driveway's nationwide inventory. We, uh, we'll see what happens tonight. We'll talk to you hopefully next week, and we're talking about us being yeah. uh, deeper in these playoffs. Hey, anytime, guys. I'd be happy to come back on with you and break down Hawks Heat Series sometime next week. <laughs> some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite MLB team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite MLB team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. How did one man go from the scion of a Bay Area sausage company to triple murderer? Bud Stewart was always just a little off the rails. I'm Natalia Gravich, and I explored this question and many others on The Sausage King, a new podcast from KCBS Radio and Odyssey. He would park the truck with the pig and the straw in front of my campaign headquarters. Didn't like to follow any rules. Subscribe and listen now on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. The NBA Finals are here. Unlock every angle with coverage from the BetQL Network. Get ahead of the game with early morning betting trends, game recaps, pick predictions, and more from the Daily Tip. Unlock the best bets for each game with BetQL Daily, and you better you bet. And get live reactions to the biggest finals moments with BetMGM Tonight. Listen on the Odyssey app or watch live and on demand on Twitch.